Hey guys, it's Wes from Animation Toolkit. Welcome back to the workshop. And today we are covering the basics of thread locking. It's a very quick tutorial guys, but it will get you on your way with your armatures in absolutely no time at all. There's a few do's and don'ts, um, but we're not going to go into incredible detail with this today. We're just going to show you the basics, we, which you can apply then to the rest of your armatures. So let's kick start. Uh, guys, you're going to need two pairs of pliers. We've got hobby cra uh, hobbycraft type pliers here. These are small. Um, they are great. They are not too strong. And the teeth indentation, uh, just here, the teeth indentation uh, isn't too severe. So two pairs of pliers got those. We've also got some electrician's tape. We're definitely going to need some electrician's tape. Also some thread locker now this thread locker is called z71 we stock this uh, at animation toolkit so check out the links down below um so z21 is a permanent thread locker it's red in color which means that once you've thread locked your parts together hopefully they are never going to come apart and that's the purpose of this today guys is to show you the technique which makes sure that these parts never ever come apart so yes you're gonna need some of that as I say available from animation toolkit as are the pliers if you need some but you might have some already in your tool arsenal uh, also you're gonna need some parts of which to start thread locking so we have here um, a six millimeter uh, animation toolkit uh, ball uh, a 50 mil animation toolkit uh, bone bar and of course, we've also got a six millimeter standard, uh, sorry, Pro. This is a CNC cut animation toolkit, six millimeter single ball joints. So what do we do? Well, let's just move these out of the way very quickly. Don't need those at the moment. We need to start with the tools. Guys, just to be safe on the safe side, this stuff can be toxic, it can be uh, skin irritant, so please take the uh, correct measures uh, to avoid any serious contact with skin, especially if you are prone to uh, allergies. Um, it is very good stuff, but of course we wouldn't want anyone getting hurt. So that being said, on to the pliers. I'm gonna take my electrician's tape it's quite plasticky this guys quite like it a lot because it can have a lot of grip and you'll see why now so we'll just find the end of that and I'm just gonna start by eesh, tearing a piece off uh, that is no more than 10 centimeters long and I'm gonna wrap and protect the teeth on this small pair of pliers like so so that is essential. But not just that side, guys. I'm going to do both sides. So that's one. Let's do this one too. Okay, so the teeth on this set of pliers are wrapped. And I'm going to do exactly the same on my other set of pliers. Why are you doing this? I hear you ask. Well, we're gonna use the pliers to nip up or snug up the parts when we have them into position and on their threads. But because of the nature of the parts, they are small, they can be temperamental, even though they're made from stainless steel, guys. What we don't wanna do ultimately is scratch them in any way. And if we scratch a ball, for example, uh, that might uh, make the ball work in the socket slightly different than you'd be expecting. Um, the scratches on the ball could give them a wayward movement fashion. Or it could cause them to grind uh, in the ball joint, which is what we don't want at all. So. The tape on these both pairs of pliers are gonna protect the stainless steel balls, but it also give us great grip when we're nipping up. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean now. Once they're ready, guys, grab a piece of tissue. You're gonna need that for this. Obviously, this is our thread locker. 
the star of the show in this one. So open the thread locker, this is brand new to us today. And what I'm gonna do, first and foremost, is I'm gonna thread lock this 50 millimeter bar into this six millimeter single ball joint, okay? So this is an M3 thread in here, and this is an M3 thread too. So this is obviously the female and the male, and we need to make those two parts together using our thread locker. So thread locker we use as a type of glue. It's not necessarily a glue though, however. Uh, it works in a fashion where it reacts to the metal that it comes up against. And when it reacts to that metal, it, what it wants to do, it wants to expand and crystallize and form a resin. And that's really important to us guys that it expands and crystallizes and forms a resin. So if we nip up two parts really tightly, as that, as that resin or as that um, thread lock starts to expand between the threads, what it's doing is locking them into, into position. So let's get ourselves started. Right, what we're gonna do is first take the thread locker. This is the Zap Z71 thread locker, red, permanent. Uh, we've used this quite a lot to be fair and it's very good. Uh, we used to use thread lock um, from Henkel, um, it was to 700 uh, which was good but we found this to be even better if used correctly now what you'll notice is I've put it on both parts of the thread so it's on the male and the female part of the thread we're not using this like super glue guys we're not using it sparingly we want to get plenty all over both parts and I'm just using my fingers there to work it into that joint repeatedly just to make sure just to make sure that, that thread locker has gone all the way into position right so there you go so at that point it's finger tight guys I'm just gonna take the tissue and just wipe away any excess now I've been lucky so far my hands are still pretty clean and I've got none on me so at this point guys what I'm gonna do is take the pliers which I've previously wrapped in tape as you've seen before and I'm just gonna nip these up some people may say we're gonna snug them up but this is super important part of it guys so I want to feel that that thread can no longer go into that joint okay so we had quite a way to go there this time okay so that is really nice and snug okay so that's one down Now, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ball, the six millimeter ball, guys, and I'm gonna take the, uh, the Z71, uh, just place it into the female part of the thread of the ball, and then obviously follow up with a bit more thread locker on the male part of the uh, stud. That's an M3 stud. Now this time, a little bit more messy, uh, I can't really help but get that onto my fingers. So I'm gonna work that in and out of that thread again, multiple times this time, same as before. And what I want to achieve is to make sure that that thread is really in there. And I, just to be 100% sure, guys, I'm just sticking some more in. As I say, I want that to be super tight and I want it to work properly. So there we go. Right, a little bit of thread lock on the fingers this time. So I will take a minute and go and wash my hands. I definitely don't want to lose that. You leave that on my fingers. So there we go. Uh, so I'm gonna take 
the pliers again, guys. And I'm just gonna hold, hold the bar with one set of pliers and I'm just gonna very gently, very gently snug this ball onto the thread. It's not a case of over tightening, guys. It's quite hard to over tighten these because they're made of stainless steel. But you do want to make sure that that ball is completely on that thread. As I say, now you see that the, the cellar tape, the cellar tape is completely protecting the teeth from scratching this ball. Right. Okay, now it's just bit there, so it's brilliant. That is really snug, not going too over the top. And I don't want to leave any indentations on that ball. Okay, guys, we are almost there. But this is the most important part of the whole process now. What I'm about to tell you, if this isn't adhered to, then the chances of this working and failing are quite high. Once everything has been thread locked up with our thread locker and nipped up with the pliers, it's essential, absolutely 100% essential, that we leave this part with the thread locked parts in a warm space. And I say warm space, it could be an airing cupboard on a radiator or in a warm window. We leave those parts there for at least 12 hours, guys. 12 hours is the minimum cure time for the thread locker to work. That is super essential. Guys, I've been Wes for Animation Toolkit. I really hope that you've enjoyed this very quick tutorial today. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you can, and the notification bell if you want to see more videos just like this one. Guys, we will see you on the next one. That's all folks. Thank <laughs> you.